Last night, a flocked animal from New York Comic Con sold for $262. And today, I'm going to give you guys my predictions for what I think you'll have to pay if you're trying to grab any of the limited pieces from New York Comic Con this week. Here we go. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So you heard me correct. Last night, a 1500 piece flocked animal with the drums from the Muppets, which is an upcoming NYCC exclusive, sold last night on a whatnot auction for $262, which is a lot of money and not surprising if you've been in the Funko game for at least a little while, you will understand that limited con pieces tend to go for quite a bit, especially in the first week of their release. However, the New York Comic Con exclusives haven't even released yet as the con is starting this upcoming Thursday. So the seller who was actually able to get this pop early and sell it was none other than our good friend Chris, aka Savage Pops. Now, before we get into the heart of this video, which is going to be me giving you guys my predictions on what these limited pieces are going to cost, in the upcoming few days, I want to commend Savage Pops for doing something that I don't hear very frequently from sellers. Actually, I haven't heard this uh, at all in the last few years, so that's why I wanted to bring it up. When he was actually auctioning off this pop, and this is arguably going to be one of the hottest pieces of the con, if not the sought after limited piece that a lot of people are trying to get, he was actually encouraging everybody not to go crazy, not to overspend, and he was informing his audience of 300 people who were watching at the moment that he was selling this pop, and he was letting them know that this pop is actually going to be releasing this upcoming week and the rest of the 1500 pieces will be available for sale at some point from either him or some other sellers. So he was actually telling people to hold back, which I thought was really respectable, a very class act, and just overall very professional of a seller who happened to have something early where when things get dropped early, especially if they're limited, people can really, you know, spend a lot, blow things out of proportion in terms of value. And I think $262 was actually a pretty fair price for this pop. But let's get into the heart of this video. I know a lot of people are very concerned for the limited pieces for New York Comic Con that are releasing this week, of which we are getting quite a few. We are getting the four very limited Funko Fusion limited pieces. We're getting, of course, the Flocked Animal. We're also getting the Wolverine Metallic, which is going to be with that lounge fly bag in the combo. And then we're also getting the V Friends pop, the Jack O. Uh, that's going to be limited to or the Jolly Jacko. That's going to be limited to a thousand pieces. And then we're also going to be getting the Deadpool and Wolverine, or excuse me, the Deadpool on Zamboni ride, which is going to be limited to 8,500 pieces. Now, before I give you guys my official predictions, I want to just reflect back on the limited pieces that we got for San Diego Comic Con this year. And we actually got some pretty good ones, but you guys will be pretty shocked at what they are actually selling for. Only four short months later here in October. So the first up, we're gonna run through them really quick. Diamond Thrawn we got for San Diego Comic-Con was limited to 3,000 pieces. This one was selling for well over $300 when it first initially hit the market. Now, currently trending for $100. So it's depreciated by 67%. Also, next up we have the 4,000 piece protozoa now this one was a very off the wall limited piece i don't even think funko thought it was going to sell well because they actually put this in that san diego comic-con bundle and um, as a result, it was only going for about $30 to $40, even at the peak of hype with San Diego Comic-Con. You could pick it up today for only $30, so it's, it wasn't a very desired piece. I think if it actually wasn't limited, it would probably be worth less than retail. Next up, we have the 6-inch Glitter Baymax. That was limited to 1,500 pieces. It was selling for well over $200 during the week of San Diego Comic-Con, now currently trending for $60. Next up, we have Zero with the Sunglasses. This one one was also a glow in the dark variant limited to 3,000 pieces it was selling for well over a hundred dollars during the week of San Diego Comic-Con now trending for 35 and the last one that we have to talk about for San Diego Comic-Con I am actually keeping out Funko's characters so not talking about Freddy Franny or Proto because we're not getting any limited Freddy Franny or Proto pops from New York Comic-Con so I don't really feel like it's relevant the last one that we got for San Diego Comic-Con that was a non-Funko character was Voltron. He was limited to 5,000 pieces. He was, interestingly enough, also 
in the San Diego Comic-Con bundle. So that was weird. And then um, there was a shared sticker and a con sticker version, both part of that 5,000 piece umbrella. They were selling for over $150 during the week of San Diego Comic-Con. Now the con sticker with that piece count is going for 85 with the shared sticker with that same piece count going for 41. So you guys can see in only a few short months, a lot of these pops have kind of been forgotten about. They've depreciated quite a bit on the aftermarket. Now let's get into New York Comic Con. It's something that Funko did for San Diego Comic Con, which they're kind of carrying over here into New York Comic Con, is we're getting exclusives that are part of the con catalog that have a regular version and a variant version. So for instance, for San Diego Comic Con, Zero, Baymax, and uh, Thrawn all had non-variant counterparts, which I think ultimately hurts their potential value in the long run, because if you give collectors the opportunity to get the non-variant, non-limited one, a lot of people might just go grab that regular one instead of you know spending a lot of money for the flocked diamond glow variant, whatever. And you're gonna have that same situation coming up with New York Comic Con for Animal with the Drums. There is a regular version, and then there's the flocked version. Arguably, everybody wants the flocked version, but if that flocked version is just out of your budget, you're probably just going to go with the regular one, which you don't even have to go to the con to get. You can actually buy it on Funko.com when the exclusives, the shared exclusives, drop this Thursday on Funko's website. And I think what you're going to see is the potential for the flocked animal to not really go as high because people have that second option. Now, unlike the flocked animal, the, um, the Funko Fusion Pops, those limited pieces, the Jolly Jacko, they have no non-variant counterparts. So the only way you're gonna be able to get those is either by going to New York Comic Con or buying from somebody who is going to New York Comic Con. So let's talk about the Funko Fusion Pops really quick. We're getting the 500 piece Dilophosaurus and 500 piece Megan. Now, I've seen some people say they want the Dilophosaurus. I think that you're going to have to pay in the neighborhood of $200 to $250 simply because it's a 500 piece, not potentially because it is a Dilophosaurus. I don't really see a lot of people saying that they want it for that particular character. It's more that I'm seeing people want it because of that very low piece count and they want to keep their Funko Fusion set complete. Now, Megan is a little bit different. Megan, with it being, you know, Halloween, uh, October, you know, spooky season and everything, I think this one actually is going to be going for a little bit higher. So I estimate this one will be going for 300 to 350 right out of the gate because Megan is a little bit more of a popular character and she also has that 500 limited piece count on the front of her box. Now, the other two Funko Fusion Pops that we're getting also limited the thousand piece Skeletor and the thousand piece Chucky. Without a doubt, hands down, the most uh, requested, most re desired, most hyped up Funko Fusion Pop that I'm seeing a lot of people talk about is that Skeletor from Masters of the Universe. Even though that is not a 500 piece count, it's a thousand piece count, I think if you want to try to grab it this week, you're going to be looking at paying in the neighborhood of three to four hundred dollars on the aftermarket. I just see a lot of hype, a lot of popularity surrounding that Skeletor character. Skeletor being, you know, a big character from Masters of the Universe. So I think combining him with that limited piece count coming from the Funko Fusion line and overall, the figure just looks really good. I think you're going to have to pay a lot for that one. The next one up and the last one part of that uh, quadruple limited Funko Fusion set is Chucky. Chucky is also very popular and I think you're going to be looking at $250 to $300 right out of the gate. Now I'm not talking long term. I am just talking about in the next 7 to 30 days. That's what I think these pops are going to be trending for with the high end, of course, within the next seven days. And then, you know, at the end of this 30 day window, I think you're going to see some pretty big dips in value. But the next thing that I want to talk about really quick in regards to the limited pieces is the Deadpool on Zamboni and the Wolverine with the Loungefly bag. These are actually both dropping on Funko's website. So I don't think they're going to be trending for 
much above retail. If anything, they might be trending below retail until they sell out just because they're available to everybody. You don't actually have to go to the con. You don't have to pay somebody who went to the con to get these. I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to New York Comic Con and I'm still going to go on my phone and buy the Deadpool on Zamboni for my collection uh, on Funko's website because I don't have to stand in line. I don't have to pay anybody. And I think Funko should do that. I think there should be limited pieces that are exclusive to the con, but also have a few limited pieces that are available to everyone uh, to purchase on Funko's website. The last limited piece that I want to talk about, I think this is going to be the sleeper pop of the con. And this is the Jolly Jacko limited to a thousand pieces. It's metallic. And this is from the V Friends and Funko collaboration that they're doing. V Friends is the brand started by Gary V. He's got lots of different characters. And I think this could be the start of a very interesting partnership between Funko and Gary V. And if they continue on and they make more V Friends characters in Funko Pop form over over the next few years, I think that's only going to help the success of this first pop launching here at New York Comic Con this week. I might be crazy, I might be really off the mark, but I think this pop is going to be selling for $300 plus this week right out of the gate. I think just because Gary V has such a strong following, I'm a huge Gary V fan. I actually tried to get his pop. I put in for the lottery. I was not selected, unfortunately. But I think just with him being so successful and so well-known on his own, and then the fact that you have a only 1,000-piece pop, I think this pop is going to be very desired by a lot of Gary V fans and followers of his. And then you're going to have a few Funko people who might cross over with that that are also going to try to get it. But I think a lot of Funko collectors just might not understand the importance or the significance of this pop. So it's okay, this pop is not necessarily marketed towards you, although it's definitely a really cool character. Once again, goes with the spooky season theme, but I think you're gonna see a lot of Gary V fanatics, V friends, fans, going to be trying to get this, not just for their collection, but just to have, because it is the first Funko product in collaboration with Gary V. So those are my predictions for the limited pieces, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Yes, there is another limited piece with the four pack of the biddies. I don't think the biddies are going to be anything valuable long term, even though we are going to try to get them. I don't think they'll be valued much well over retail. But since today is Monday, it is time for our weekly Monday Motivation segment. Every single week here on the channel, I like to bring you guys a small piece of Monday Motivation to help kickstart your week and get you through the toughest day of the week, which is typically Monday. A lot of hype this week for New York Comic Con, and as you guys can probably tell by my quick breakdown of all the limited pieces and my predictions, it will greatly benefit you as a buyer and collector in this space to wait, of course, you know, to wait, not let FOMO get the best of you. That is something that we have talked about time and time again here on this channel, and I know in the long run, it's actually saved people quite a bit of money. However, Today's Monday Motivation is not directed at most of you guys watching as collectors and buyers this week. My Monday Motivation is actually directed towards sellers, resellers, flippers, scalpers, whatever you classify yourself as. Anyone going to New York Comic Con with the intention of standing in line, buying pops from the booth, and then selling them to people, collectors on the aftermarket. My Monday Motivation is be honest with your customer base. Wherever you're selling, when you take those items and you sell them on eBay, Macari, whatnot, Twitch, Instagram, wherever you're selling, your own website, if you are doing it, be honest with your customers. And here's why. And this is also why I wanted to point out what Savage said last night on his auction. He was very honest. He was very professional and he was very upfront about the item. He didn't try to oversell it. He didn't try to hype it up. He just said, here, it is what it is. If you guys are paying attention to everything going on in the Funko world, then you know exactly what this pop is. And I think this week, Unfortunately, you're going to see a lot of people really overhype the items that they're selling. They're going to tell you that they're the only ones that have this item, that they're the first ones that have this item, that this item is going to be worth a thousand dollars a couple of years from now. Unfortunately, with selling, sometimes people can take hype or popularity or excitement for something going on and they can kind of misconstrue it to benefit them financially. And I think, as a reseller myself, I think honesty goes a long way with your customers and your fan base. If you are honest and upfront and realistic 
to your buyers or whoever is purchasing your products and say, hey, this is the 1500 piece flocked animal from the Muppets. There aren't that many Muppets Pops. Muppets Pops are very desirable. This one is actually the first animal where he actually has his drum set. Those are all realistic facts that you can say while selling that pop. This is only 1500 pieces. That is true. There's only 1500 pieces of this pop. But yelling at your audience and telling them, hey, this pop is going to be worth you know, $1,000 from now. Hey, this pop just sold for $800 in somebody else's stream. Those are not things that need to be said because you are unfortunately just spewing rumors or inaccurate facts about the item. People are excited about New York Comic Con. They're excited to buy the items if you are lucky to have them in hand first. There is plenty of money to be made. If you buy an item for $15 and you can sell it for $262, well, I think you've made a pretty good profit margin. There's no reason to overdo it because what I've been seeing with the cons these past couple years and the popularity of platforms like Whatnot and eBay Live and all these selling platforms where you can actually live sell your items, I'm seeing a lot of people spend a lot of money to travel to these cons and get these items and then bring them to their uh, account on one of these live selling platforms. There's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. However, don't just focus on New York Comic Con. Think about the weeks ahead. Think about the months ahead because if you attract a customer this week, wouldn't you rather have them come buy a pop from you every single week for the rest of the year and not just overspend on a pop this week and then never come back because they're upset that they overpaid or they're upset at something you said? You gotta think about it long term. And I think honesty, being realistic, and giving people, you know, actual honest answers when it comes to these items, I think it really goes a long way with people in this community. So just keep that in mind. You have every right to hype up and, you know, get excited about the items you're selling. We're very excited for New York Comic Con, but just keep what Savage said in the back of your mind. Keep realistic facts on the table and um, I think you'll have a very positive experience. So guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on all of our upcoming NYCC content. As always, don't stop shooting until you score, and we'll see you guys very soon.